Hi everyone! Today I'll make an agar for those in various powders. Namely, I will try to cook with poorly flowering substances like flour and tell you all the problems and subtitles that I encountered. Let's go! Let's start with the fact that bulk materials are different. River sand is crumbly. It pours without any problems even in the small hole of the air glass. But, for example, the flour doesn't pour at all. And it is precisely the material that I will try to learn how to dose. I must admit that this is not the first attempt to create a working sample. And the task at hand tormented me a lot. I started with this giant. It's good for large volumes, but I needed more compact option. Write in the comments if you want me to complete a larger version of the agar. But let's go back to business. This time I will not burden you with designing and will immediately show you the finished 3D model. Here we have a NEMA 17 stepper motor. In front of it is a protrusion for the clutch and bearing. Receiver approximately 500 grams of bulk mixtures. And an agar inside. Let's figure out. To print and glue such an agar well, I had to divide it into four parts. Actually, two halves of the agar itself front ring for fixing and adapter for the motor. The agar will vibrate, so the connection to the motor shafts must be good. When I made a hole for the shafts in the two halves of the agar, there was a printing error, backlash, and the hole quickly became loose and began to slip. So I had to add the same adapter. I will glue it as usual with the chloromethan. The easiest way is to find a suitable container and simply immerse the agar halves in the solvent. After, we glue it, install the front ring for centering, tighten it with clamps and put a bearing on the back. Thus, the agar will stick together as we need, without this point and trouble. When the agar grabbed a little, I glue the clutch. I generously lubricate the hole with the solvent and the adapter itself. I immerse it entirely in the solvent for 5 seconds, then we press it into the agar. My hole wasn't big enough, so I had to make a lot of effort and a lot of leaked plastic formed. I fixed this in the source code, which, by the way, will be in the description of the video in the same place as like and subscribe button, if you know what I mean. Also, don't forget to glue the front ring at the end. We can take it apart on the next day. Probably you have already wondered why this hole in the front into which I am now pouring epoxy resin. I will glue the shafts into this hole. In the front cover we have two bearings. The first one is narrower than the shaft. It's the end and serves as stop that will be prevent the agar from moving forward. And the second bearing centers the agar in the track, preventing it from rubbing against the walls. As a shaft, I use a regular 4 mm drill. It must be pressed in, so that 9.5 mm remains on the outside. 0.5 mm is needed to slightly chamfer the shaft and it's better centered. This should be done smoothly, without a lot of enthusiasm, removing in the process the excess that can climb through the top. After the epoxy has hardened it, we clean everything, smooth it with the solvent, let the agar rest and finally harden for a couple of days. And at this time we will have something to do, as we have to prepare all the other parts. Let's start with the body. I will print it with 100% in fill and backings. It will be possible to try to print with an overhang but I didn't dare to experiment on such a large model. The whole print took me about 10 hours and the first time it turned out pretty well. In general, the funnel went off without incidents. The support came off easily and almost no stripping has required. The nozzle details will also be printed with 100% in fill.
and a few words about the mountaineers. In my video, you could see a side nozzle for supplying liquids. You don't need it, and in the source code that will be two identical loops without holders. But since I made it with a holder, just for myself, you could see it in the video. Further, there are no special nuances. Just print out all the remaining components and clean up where it's necessary. The parts are ready, let's assemble, you might think. But no, the attentive ones have already noticed that there is no front in the body. I cut it out of transparent plastic, 1.5 mm thick, and just glue it. To do this, I degrease the body. Tear off the plastic film. Oh, how I love it! Then we install the plastic in its place. I will fix it in the corners with pieces of plasticine. I will just seal it with silicone sealant. When it dries, you can remove the plasticine, degrease and make the corners. I immediately mark the center and glue the fasteners. By the way, anything can be used as fasteners. It all depends on where and how you are going to install this acre. The main thing is to glue it well in the case, since vibration doesn't spare weak connections. And without vibration, the acre will not work normally. And here we have such a thing. To put on the nozzle, you need to combine the protrusion with the hole in the body. Now we can mark the places for the lugs of the mounts and glue them. First, I make bastings, then I remove the lid, coat with the solvent, and then I collect everything. If you lubricate it without removing the cover, there is a risk of sticking the cover to the case. After that, you can remove the cover and walk well with the solvent from all sides. In the end, for reliability, I decided to glue the transport insert with a dichlorate tin from the inside. Not methane, it's important. Methane will not dissolve plexiglass, and a miracle will not happen. To assemble the agar, we will need a pair of bearings and a clutch. First, insert a 3mm into the nozzle, then a 4mm one. And pressed well, I needed a vise for this. Nothing must project. At the acre, I grind off the chamfer a little. High precision performance test of the Unite components passed. We first insert the coupling into the body, then the large bearing. I don't know how long the plastic shaft will last in the contact with the clutch. If it greens, it's possible to provide a metal tube for the tip of the acre in a future version. I will put the motor like this, NEMA 17 by 16 mm. It's big enough, but it pulls the load with a margin and doesn't jam. Easy to install with a few screws. For test I will not design a separate rack, but I will fix the agar in housing from the future dispenser. To dampen extra vibration in the body, I will install such a vibration mount from a quadrocopter. It's ready! I connect to the controller. I shove the connection diagram in detail in the video with a peristaltic pump. I will leave a link to it so I don't have to repeat it. Having revolved the pump sketch a little, I will try to make an interval fit for the anchor. 
at the first connect, the powder scatters a little. This is because my short pass was limited in size. When working there on a pulse, nothing will scatter. And if you have a very loose mixture of sand, you need to just lengthen the acre. So here's the first run. And it works! Great! Without vibration, as I said, the powder hangs on the walls and doesn't fall down. I'll twist the fiber a little more, adding pulsing motion and get vibration mode. It became a little louder, but it looks much stable. Check it out! And the powder stops sticking to the walls. And that's all I have for today. If you want to see a full-fledged dispenser based on this anger, write in the comments. And don't forget to like and subscribe if you haven't already done this. All sources and links to support the channel will be in the description. Bye!